on behalf of the congregation here at Geneva Lutheran Church, I do welcome you. Um, we know that Nancy would not have appreciated the temperature today, <laughs> but the sunshine, all for her, 100%. I'm grateful that you're here. Welcome in the name of Jesus, the Savior of the world. We are gathered to worship, to proclaim Christ crucified and risen, to remember before God our sister Nancy to give thanks for her life, to commend her to our merciful Redeemer, and to comfort one another in our grief. I'll invite you to please stand as you are able, and we'll continue with the thanksgiving for baptism. All who are baptized into Christ have put on Christ. In her baptism, Nancy was clothed with Christ. In the day of Christ's coming, she shall be clothed with glory. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth, who formed us from the dust of the earth, who by your breath gave us life, we glorify you. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, who suffered death for all humanity, who rose from the grave to open the way to eternal life, we praise you. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope, we worship you. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. I'll invite you to join in singing hymn number 856, which is in the red hymnals that are just in front of you.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Nancy. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us faith to see that death has been swallowed up in the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ, so that we may live in confidence and hope until by your call we are gathered to our heavenly home in the company of all your saints, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated, and we are so blessed to have Carol and Bridget both sharing memories today. I'm not sure who's going first. <laughs> You can just <laughs> you can just come right up here. That's a good idea. Good morning. Thank you. My siblings and I are just so happy that you could join us here or virtually to honor our mom, Nancy Rasmussen's memory, and to celebrate her remarkable life. <clears throat> our mom was born on July 30th, 1931, to Clarence and Esther Peterson in Dwight. She had one sibling, an older brother, Donald, who is still alive. Her family later moved to the Chicago area and eventually bought a house in Maywood. She made a great friend in high school, Virginia, who remained close to her her whole life. Mom went away to college to Grandview University on a one-year gymnastic scholarship, then returned home to work and continue her education. She met our father, Warren, while working as a secretary at the American Can Company. He was working there as a co-op intern. She followed him to Northwestern <laughs> to complete her degree in sociology, and they married on June 13, 1953. There is more. <laughs> they were married for 68 years, and when talking about our mother, the conversation must also encompass our father, because they were such an incredible, loving, and supportive team throughout their entire lives. In time, they bought a house in Elmhurst and had the four of us kids, Karen, Mark, Carol, Wendy. Our mother was the perfect complement to our industrial engineer father, as she ran a very organized household. <clears throat> Did not rub off. And we lovingly <laughs> referred to her as the domestic engineer. During this time, mom's interest in education and community service began, as she became involved on the board of our preschool, Buttons and Bows. After a two-year job-related move to Toledo, Ohio, our family returned to Illinois and built a house in Geneva in 1969. Mom loved that house. She had a passion for entertaining, and I'm sure many of you attended events at the house hosted by Nancy. The annual summer picnic, potlucks, holiday get-togethers, etc. While the four of us siblings were growing up and attending school, our mother continued her volunteerism and support for the local Geneva community. She was a member of the community chest, as well as getting elected and serving on the school board for many years. Uh, coincidentally, those years were when all of us were in high school, so I think she had ulterior motives, but hard to misbehave when everyone knows who your mother is. Later in life, she continued her involvement as a volunteer, reading with kindergartners, supporting the expanding preschool program at Bethlehem Lutheran Church, and the development of the Marco Island Academy, a public charter high school and the only high school on the island of Marco. Mom also enjoyed participating on the social committee at the Madeira and was a frequent blood donor, receiving several five-gallon plaques from the Red Cross. As we grew and married and had children of our own, she became the beloved Momo to her eight grandchildren. In addition to her grandchildren, <clears throat> mom had many passions, family, faith, friends, community, and country, and tennis. 
She was an avid and formidable opponent and rushed through two hip replacement surgeries to return to the tennis court. She and dad made a dynamite team, doubles team. And I know in all the years that we played together, BJ and I never won one set off of them. <laughs> Our parents also had a great love of travel and were fortunate to visit five continents and enjoy over 20 cruises together, meeting new friends, cruising with friends, and enjoying time with dad's sister Luella and her husband Carl. Mom also had a great love of the nature and the beach. She and dad began their southern migration with a series of timeshare weeks in Hilton Head, and eventually they made their way farther south to Marco Island, Florida, where they bought the condo, which would become their winter residence. Mom and Dad spent many wonderful years wintering in Marco, enjoying the weather, the condo community, fabulous area restaurants, and we all truly enjoyed visiting them there. They were also happy to escape the hot, humid summers of Marco and return to Geneva, where they enjoyed Dad's Arboretum, Mom's Flower Garden, and Rhubarb Patch, and being close to Wendy and Mark's family and longtime friends. When she was close to 80 and still mowing grass and playing tennis, mom suffered serious complications from a supposedly minor surgery, which forced her to trade her tennis racket for a walker. But she had an indomitable spirit, and although the change was not how she would have wanted her life to be, her mantra became, life is good. And she was truly grateful for every day. Over her life, she made many great friendships and kept in touch with both close and extended family. She was a prolific birthday card sender and letter writer who did not consider email a proper form of communication. <laughs> her happiest place was the 11th floor lanai of the Marco Island condo, sitting in the sunshine, reading, doing her crosswords and jumble, and watching the many varied happenings on the beach of the Marriott next door, especially the weddings. After our dad died late last year, mom was so blessed to be surrounded by such a supportive community of friends at the Madeira, especially her adopted sister, Lynn, and the fabulous Dial and her staff, particularly my Monique, Leslie, and Mizzy, which all allowed her to remain in her beloved condo. We are gathered together in celebration today because that's what she wanted. And in some way, Nancy was a part of all of our lives. We can take comfort knowing that she had a rich and rewarding life and that she has been reunited with the love of her life, Warren, through the grace of their heavenly father. We are very fortunate. <clears throat> Yes, we are, <sighs> to have had her in her life for her 90 years. And although we miss her terribly, her love, thoughtfulness, inspiration, and passion will continue to live on in our memories. Thank you all for helping us to celebrate our mother and her life well lived. a hard one to follow. Oh. Good morning all. Thank you for being here to help honor our Momo, as Aunt Carol had so nicely introduced. I'm Bridget Neighbors. I'm Wendy's daughter and one of Momo's eight grandchildren. One of my favorite stories Momo would always tell was one of my elementary school teachers questioned me one time when I kept talking about this Momo. Stopped me and said, What's a Momo? And I, did, I was shocked. I didn't know how to respond because it, it's an all-encompassing thing. Some people are in this life are lucky. I have the pleasure of having a grandma. But my siblings, Kevin, Cameron, and I, my cousins, Eric, Dana, Sarah, Bailey, and Kyle, we didn't just have a grandma. We had a Momo, and that is much, much more. Throughout the past 27 years, I have never encountered anyone else who has ever had a Momo. And I wholeheartedly believe I never will, because Momo stands for so much more than what a typical grandma is. 
So just a little background, for those of you who knew my grandma, my grandparents, they were some of the biggest Danes you will ever meet. They literally had a sign in their garage that said parking for Danes only. So you knew where to park if you weren't there. But um, she told us that Momo stood for mother's mom in Danish, Mo, Mo, hence the Mo, Mo. And Karen welcoming Eric to the family first, that's how her name was born. And at the time, I don't think she realized how important that name would become to her family, to each of us grandchildren, and what the, na what the weight of her in that name would carry with us. Um, because, now the reason I'm emphasizing the name, importance of her name is because the name Momo would be nothing without the woman behind it. It is because of who she is that gives the name so much weight and so much importance. So what makes a Momo Momo? The word that even comes remotely close is fierce. Putting her whole heart and more into what she did, Momo never did anything less than 150%. She was a definition of a fierce woman. As Carol mentioned, she was fiercely competitive, for one example. Um, anyone who had the pleasure of playing tennis against her knows that well. Much like Carol, me and Carol, I've never won a game of tennis. Mo Momo had me start at the age of five, played doubles against her and grandpa, never once. But that went through everything. Yahtzee, mini golf, everything she did. <laughs> I don't think she ever lost a game of mini golf, besides what the scorecard said. And I don't know how she did it, but those dice were rigged. But the thing about it was, was what I take away from that is that winning doesn't just get handed to you. She taught us that it is dedication, practice, patience, and having Maria Sharapova as your doubles partner that it takes to be able to beat her. But most of all, give your all, no matter the outcome. And she was fiercely compassionate. She understood her blessings in life, which led her to a lifelong commitment of giving and doing whatever she could for others. Whether it be delivering meals on wheels, working as an advocate in the local juvenile justice system, or being a classroom helper, as Aunt Carol had said, in the Geneva Community Elementary Schools, she knew how much she had to offer, and it set an example for all of us that no matter how much you have to give, the smallest amount of acts can go so far. If there was a committee, you can bet Momo was on it. So for myself specifically, I grew up in Geneva, which was really with my siblings, which was a unique opportunity living half, away, half a mile away from them. This also meant that we all lived in the same community that we had, they had been a part of for 30 plus years. Went to the same church, Momo was on the school board. It was, it made it a very small world. Not only did Aunt Carol, you guys have Momo in charge, we had Momo and mom. Trying to avoid both of those, my, everything was covered. Everyone knew everything. Um, so it's the impact that she taught us about whether it was riding around with her on the Meals on Wheels for delivering it or in schools here. I had teachers tell me all the time what an impact Momo made. And it wasn't until I left that I realized how important that was. And even recently, we were at, a few summers ago, we were at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago, just on a family summer outing. And my husband, Trace, made a joke that he said, I've never seen a plaque without your grandparents' name on it. <laughs> sure enough, there they were right there on it, and I, it, it was amazing to me, because growing up in this community, I saw it firsthand, but now it's, their outreach is so much farther. She gave and gave as much as she could, heart-wise, everything, whatever they were into, there it went. It's so nice to see that she's transcended just our small community, but has now made an impact and benefited staples and communities well beyond hers, such as Marco, such as Chicago, such as the small college in Tennessee, Kentucky, where everything is, like she, her heart was so large. By and far, though, she was fiercely loving and passionate. These two go hand in hand because she loved what she was passionate about, and she was passionate about what she loved. That was tennis, traveling, reading, education, Florida, red wine, black coffee after dinner. <laughs> but she loved most fiercely more than anything else in this world was her family. It all started with my grandpa. Their love story is something that Nicholas Sparks dreams about really low. Their love is a once-in-a-lifetime best friends, partners, soulmates. Because of this love, they multiplied it by creating their family. My Aunt Karen, my Uncle Mark, my Aunt Carol, and my mom, Wendy, which eventually led to all of us grandchildren. And boy, oh boy, do they love their grandchildren. Growing up as a grandchild of Momo was life-changing, to say the least. Summer at Momo's house were what childhood is made of, especially when all the cousins were in. Whether we were at the Geneva Golf Club swimming, climbing the huge conifer tree in their front yard, using the pop-up plastic t-ball batting toy in the meadow, or reliving the nostalgic time capsule exploring our parents' bedroom upstairs. I think one of the most meaningful outings, though, was always our trip to Kittyland. 
a small amusement park in Maywood. It was tradition and one that we look forward to every year. Every year I would try to ride the big kid rides with my older cousins, Eric, Dane, and Sarah, and got told I'm too small. And then remember being trying to stay small to be able to go into all the kitty areas with my siblings, Bailey and Kyle. And it was, it was so special because Kitty Land had such, was a part of Momo. She had grown up in Maywood, this was a staple, and she was sharing it with us on top of many other things that she shared. And it was a childhood tradition that really brought our whole family together. <sighs> outside of growing up, outside of this, like I had mentioned earlier, growing up right around the corner meant that they were there for us all the time. They were our favorite babysitters. They were our chauffeurs when our activities outnumbered our parents. They were at every school or sporting event they could be. They took us along with them anywhere they went, the Brookfield Zoo, the Museum of Science and Industry, to Blackberry Farm. Their love and their interests emulated in overflowed onto us, and I am forever grateful to have had them there so much, and that they're so influential in my upbringing and who I have become today. As an adult, much of who I am, what I did, and what I became, I have to thank her for. She instilled and shared with me so much of what she loved on us, and taught us so many life lessons that I will still follow today. Some of them being, first being that a hot dog is to be eaten with ketchup only, but the ketchup's pronounced catsup. Before leaving the house, you must always brush your hair, Always keep sweets in your purse. You never know when you may need them. If you love what you do, that is all that matters. Celebrate the accomplishments, no matter the size or importance. Achievement in any form deserves recognition in a good job, as well as an ice cream bar. And we are ca uh, capable of achieving anything we put our minds to. Hard work perseveres, and if something comes easy, try something a little harder. So these last two are ones that truly set Momo apart, and why not having her around will be so difficult. You know, some people really wanted their kids to be doctors, scientists, whatever. Momo, and like, that's what was considered successful. Momo never doubted that any of us would ever, like, never doubted that any of us would be anything but successful. And that is because Momo wanted us to be happy. That would, we would all find success in what we did because it's what makes us happy. And she, she was our biggest advocate, our biggest cheerleader. It didn't matter if I was doing interior design or rocket science. As long as I loved what I did, I was happy. That's all that mattered. She just wanted you to give your best, try your hardest, and do what's best for you. And that right there, it's... She was a big advocate for education, as I said. I struggled in high school with my grades. It was never easy. I had to try twice as hard to get B's and C's. When I went off to college and I started my interior design program, I had found my niche and I had found what was meant. And I started getting A's. She cried. She told me, she's like, I never, she goes, you never doubted me. She never doubted my intelligence. She said, I'm so finally, I'm so glad you finally followed your passion. You found what you were meant to do. And now go out there and be the best you can be. And she supported me through every action, every step of the way, every educational stop I went to. And there right there is Momo's final fierce, fiercely proud. She was so fiercely proud of her family. Everyone is doing what is best for them. They are happy, healthy, and successful. She encouraged, encouraged us to follow our paths, our dreams, and be the best at whatever we chose to be. And that is her 100%. She never gave up. She never sat down. She was stubborn until literally st the stubborn was take gone. It was, that's it. So going back to the question posed by my elementary school teacher as to what's a Momo. She is a woman who is very missed. She is a woman so loving and passionate and loved by so many, who changed so many lives and made so many lives better. A woman who empowered others. A woman who gave all she could to her family and others around her. A woman who shared the best things in life with all of us. A woman who led her life by example and set the standard high for what a mother, grandmother, wife, sister, and friend should be. She is a once in a lifetime type of person, one whose absence is felt every day, but will live within us, each of us for the rest of our lives, through all that she has taught and done for us. Momo is irreplaceable. Momo is Momo. Momo. There is only one, and we will love her dearly and forever, and each of us are better each day because we have known her and loved her. Thank you, Momo, for everything you've done. We love you. Much love. A reading from Proverbs 31, 10 through 31. A capable wife, 
Who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing. She laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. Here ends the reading. Let us read Psalm 23 together. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along right pathways for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare, you prepare a table, table before, before me in the presence, in the presence of, of my enemies. enemies. You, anoint you anoint my head with oil, oil and, and my cup is running over. over. Surely, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, of my life and I will, I will dwell, dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able and we'll greet the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 19th chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. Lord. Then little children were being brought to Jesus to, in order that he might lay his hands on them and pray. The disciples spoke sternly to those who brought them, but Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of heaven belongs. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, to you O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. I also always think of Warren and Nancy as a pair. I always saw them together at various er events around Geneva. Especially, I remember them at the birthday party of a dear friend of theirs, Genevieve Ott. It was down at the homestead, and I was fairly new to serving here. And I got to hear the story of how they left Geneva Lutheran many years before, when there was an issue with a former pastor. Because I had known them from our time at Bethlehem, they would show up every once in a while over the past 10 years. They were here for a summer a few years back, and they came to the polka service outdoors, and Warren proclaimed it to be the best service he had ever been to. 
We were never able to persuade him to pull out his accordion and play with us and join the fun. It wasn't so long after that that I received a note from Nancy in Florida saying she was claiming this one as her Geneva church. In a way, I guess she was coming back home. I don't know all the reasons, but I imagine like many people as they get older, friends move, things change, and suddenly it feels like everything you know is different. Or maybe she got angry about something. I mean, those of us gathered here knew her well, right? She had strong opinions about the way things should be, and everyone knew what they were. It's a gift people like Nancy have to share. You don't have to wonder what they're thinking. And maybe that was hard if you didn't share her opinion or weren't on the same side in an argument. But she also had a second gift along with that. She attached action to every opinion that she had. She made things happen. We've heard all about it in what Bridget and Carol have shared. In various activities in the History Center here in Geneva, the school board, the preschool up at Bethlehem, it's just a beginning of the list of things she accomplished. She was so much like the woman in Proverbs 31. Did you hear that? Strength and dignity are her clothing. People sometimes use this passage to make a point that women should be limited to household tasks and supporting their husband's efforts in raising children. But when we look at this reading through the lens of Nancy's life, we can see her, I hope, as an engine that makes things happen. And there was something underneath all of it, of course, a deep faith that was nurtured in many ways throughout her life, that was grounded maybe most of all in that scripture reading that we just heard from Matthew a love and a passion and an advocacy and a delight and a commitment to children and to making sure that they knew about Jesus' love too. Sunday school, preschool, everywhere. And she overcame obstacles more challenging than a few disciples trying to keep the children away. Everyone's life speaks to Christ's love and generosity sometimes through the things they do well and also through their struggles. It was true for Nancy and it's true for all of us. The difference is that now her work is completed and it leaves a big gap in the work to be done. She has shared her last opinion, well, at least in person because her voice came through loud and clear when we were planning this service today. Maybe there were even a few barriers that we needed to overcome. But she taught all of you well. And I'm thinking that she believed you could overcome anything as well. You made it here today, processing a lifetime of memories and two houses, many states apart. Her work is done, but ours continue with our unique gifts, our unique opinions, and with the light of Christ that shines through our lives, whether we are aware of that or not. Well done, Nancy, good and faithful servant. Advocate of children, opinion sharer, extraordinaire, lover of sun and light. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll invite you to please stand as you are able, and we'll sing hymn number 629. Thank you. 
invite you to join me in our confession of faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Almighty God, in holy baptism, you have knit your people together into one communion of saints in the body of Christ. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and your peace. God of mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Give courage and faith to all who mourn and assure and certain hope of your loving care that casting all of our sorrow on you, we may have strength for the days ahead. God of mercy, hear, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Grant us grace to entrust Nancy to your never failing love which sustained her in this life. Receive her into the arms of your mercy and remember her according to the favor you bear for your people. God of mercy, hear our hear prayer. Us. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, our Savior Jesus Christ destroyed the power of death and by his resurrection opened the kingdom of heaven to all. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we prepare for our celebration of Holy Communion, I'll remind you that well, we uh, celebrate an open communion table at Geneva Lutheran, believing that Jesus himself is the host and all of us are his guests. If you are welcome at Warren and Nancy's table, you are welcome also at this table. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope, we praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your son Jesus came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. In the night in which he was betrayed, betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life, death, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him, all glory and honor is yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We commune by intinction, which means you receive the bread in your hands and dip it into the wine in the silver chalice or the grape juice in the white chalice. We'll commune on one side and then we'll move over and commune on the other. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
Please stand as you are able and we'll continue with a commendation. Let us commend Nancy to the mercy of God, our maker and redeemer. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Nancy. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let's join in singing uh, verses 1 through 4 of hymn 619.
service later today, we'll be uh, going over to the cemetery and burying both Warren and Nancy a little bit later on today. But in the meantime, let us go forth in peace in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.